Hello, this video is for STAT 310 Handout 9, and it's going to cover pages 12 through 18. All right, let's go ahead and get started then. So Handout 9 Part B is going to cover the multiple comparisons for our two-way ANOVA. We're going to pick up with the example that we've been working with, which was an investigation of two treatments, therapy program, and also Ritalin dosage, and the response here again was the number of out of seat behaviors in a week. We learned from part A in the overall test that there was some sort of an effect due to either the therapy program or the Ritalin dosage levels. So that overall test just looks at whether or not there's some effect due to these treatments. P-value here is less than 0.05, so we do indeed have some effect. We then went into our additional tests and from our test from our interaction, so again, we start on the bottom here, and this is for the interaction term, dosage and therapy program. We learned that the effect of the therapy program was dependent on the dosage level. So again, a visual depiction of that interaction test is just, is the effect here at the low different than medium, different than high? So the effect of the treatment program here does that differ as I go across my dosage levels? And it certainly does. On the left-hand side, I have behavioral doing better. In the middle, they're pretty much the same, pretty close with cognitive doing a little bit better. But up here at the high dosage level, cognitive is doing substantially better. So what program is doing better depends on the dosage level. So that's the test for the interaction. Recall when we have a significant interaction effect, we cannot consider the main effect to Ritalin or the main effect to the therapy program. Because what matters is the combination of these two treatments together and not the treatments individually. Okay, so let's get on to the multiple comparisons. For our multiple comparisons, we are gonna to wanna to be selecting the drop-down menu from the interaction term here. So I'll show you that quickly and jump here. Again, to do the fit model, we're gonna go analyze fit model. I'm going to have dosage level and therapy program in my effects box along with the interaction term. So holding the control button down here, clicking cross, and then my response is the behaviors. So that's what that's going to look like inside a jump. Once I get that set up, I simply hit run, and I get a whole bunch of output. So over here was our analysis of variance and our effect tests. Up here in the right-hand corner, upper right-hand corner is where I have my comparisons that need to be done. Now I wanna be using the one here that is for the interaction term. So I'm just going to minimize these others away. We wanna be selecting the red drop-down menu from the interaction term here, one that has the star in it. So here I wanna be selecting Tukey's HSD We'll be looking at those. I want to be selecting the LS mean plot. We'll be looking at that as well. That'll produce our LS means plot. And then the other thing that we will be looking at is what's called the order difference report. And that's going to be selected underneath the red dropdown for LS mean differences to key HSD. I actually prefer the order difference report because it kind of puts into summary this big matrix of differences and also the connected letters report that we'll be looking at. So it kind of does a nice job of summarizing both of those. My LS means plot is going to looks slightly different than this one just because I take off the confidence limits here. So the version that I usually look at is here. Again, just take off the confidence limits. So the screenshot of the one that I got in the notes doesn't have the confidence limits on it. Okay, so we will be talking through all of this output here that we get in jump next. So back to the handout. Looks like I'm on page 14 of the handout. The statistically significant effects from Martuki's evaluation here are going to be the ones in red again. 
Okay, so those are the ones that are in red on that table. So here I have one, let's just go ahead and pick on this one. This is going to be for high cognition level or high cogni cognitive program, excuse me. And then the low cognitive program, that's where that row and that column match up. So this six just means that there's a difference of six between those two groups. Now this is on average. And again, this is the out of seat behaviors. So the low cognitive cognitive therapy program is going to have about six less out of seat behaviors compared to the high cognitive program. The confidence interval is provided here for that difference. So about a two and a half to nine and a half. So we're 95% certain that that difference of is going to stay between two and a half and nine and a half. With low being lower here. We also have a difference between high cognitive therapy and medium behavioral therapy. So that's another difference that we can be looking at here. High cognitive against medium behavioral. We also have high cognitive and high behavioral. That one's down here. That one's different from one another. And then we also have one in the middle here, and that's between low cognitive and medium cognitive here. So the ones in red here are ones that are statistically significant from each other. We can gain much of the same information by looking at the connected letterings report. They don't color code these for us, but just ones with different letters are going to be different. So we can see low cognitive here has a C and high cognitive has only an A. So those are gonna be different from one another. The high behavioral is going to be different from high cognitive as well, because high behavioral has a B and a C, but it doesn't have an A, and high cognitive has an A here. So those two levels are going to be different from one another. And we can go down through the other combinations as well. So I did this earlier when I was making the plot inside of Jump, but to set up your LS means plot, you're going to have to tell jump what you want overlaid here. So what do you want displayed in the graphic? So I overlaid therapy program here. And when I overlay therapy program, that means dosage levels are going to be laid across the bottom here on this plot. And again, this is the same plot that I've been making throughout handout nine. So how about the ordered difference report? So taking a look at the ordered difference report, Again, I can get that from my LS means differences from the drop down menu here. So Jump has lots of different drop down menus, and you just need to know or might have to click around to find these different things. Sometimes it gets a little overwhelming. But I'm talking about the LS mean differences report here. And I want an ordered difference report, and this is what it gives me it gives me everything that's in that table up above. Okay, so I have. In this table up here, I got lots of different comparisons that need to be done. And those are all listed out here. So these ones up towards the top here are going to be the significant differences. And once this drops off below, excuse me, once these get bigger than 0 0.05, I don't really need to consider those anymore. So those are kind of grayed out. So anything that's below 0 0.05 are going to be different from one another. So let's just look at test number one here, kind of go across here. The difference is six. Uh, let's back up. This is between high cognitive and low cognitive. So high cognitive is going to be up here. So that has a one here. And that's a comparison against low cognitive. So low cognitive has a one here. So the comparison here between about 58 or 50, a little over 58 compared to 52 here. Can I say there's a statistically significant difference between this observation right here, or this group right here, I guess, and this group up here? Remember, there's five replicates in each one of these groups. And I can. This p-value is quite small. The confidence interval does not include zero. So I know there's a statistically significant difference between those two groups. Test number two is looking at high cognitive versus high behavioral. So that's going to be a comparison here between this group 
and this group. So if I have dosage level high, so if I have kids that are dosage level high, I definitely want to be using the behavioral program. This is statistically better than the other program. It has a statistically lower out-of-seat behaviorals across the week. So again, this would be comparing here to here. And it's a significant difference. So I want to be picking this one. How about test three is going to be high cognitive against medium behavioral. So if I have a group here, high cognitive, and I have another group in the medium behavioral, the medium behavioral kids are going to do better in terms of the yada seat uh, behaviors. There are going to be less of them. So this is three. Test three is going to be comparing this group to this group. There's a whole bunch of comparisons that need to be done here. Now, luckily, a lot of them are not significant, so I don't need to worry about those. So, for example, I didn't test medium behavioral against high behavioral. I mean, that's in this list somewhere here, but it's not significant. I guess it's right here. Or where is it at? Medium behavioral against high behavioral. It's right here in the bottom. Those aren't different from one another. So this group right here is not different from this group right here. And that makes sense. It's almost flat. So if I'm doing the behavioral program, is there a difference between medium and high dosage levels? No, not at all. doesn't matter. The behavioral program is going to work the same in those two groups. Or at least I don't have evidence that they're going to work different from one another. So again, of all of these, I think there's 15 tests here. The only ones that I really need to concern myself with are the top four because those are significant. Okay, how about a contrast? So this is something a little bit new or different here. What a contrast is just a very specialized test. So we can create kind of unique tests or our own tests if we want. So consider only the medium and high levels for dosage level. So suppose I have kids in the medium or high here. And I wanna know, is there an effect due to the therapy program? So just for these two levels, is there an effect due to the therapy program? So what we're going to want to do is average the two medium and high here. So the cognitive level, what is kind of a typical or average response for students in these two groups if they're given the cognitive therapy program? That's going to be right about here, just halfway in between these two. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the behavioral. What's kind of an average response for the behavioral group across these two dosage levels. Okay, so in some sense, I'm not too concerned or I'm not concerned about, sorry about that. I'm not concerned about which of these two dosage levels I'm at. I'm just gonna combine those or put those together. So this average right here is actually based off of 10 observations. The five from here and the five from here. So again, the people that are either in the medium or high level, what is kind of a typical response if they're in the cognitive therapy program? That looks like it's gonna be right about here or just short of 57 out of seat behaviors. Whereas the behavioral program is going to be down here at about 54. So it looks like if I'm at that medium or high dosage level, the behavioral program is going to be better. But I can do a statistical test for that. So going way back to part A here, the mu12 just indicated the average for the medium dosage level Okay, the medium dosage level and also the high dosage level. And then I'm, that's going to be this dot and this dot. And then I contrast that or compare that against these two dots here. Now, the reason I lay this out this way is because you need to know what the coefficients are for the medium cognitive level. So the coefficient here, we can just take this two and bring that out front. That's gonna be one half mu one two plus one half mu one three. So 
So I'm going to have medium cognitive, okay? I'm going to give the medium cognitive and the high cognitive. All right, those are both. You just go ahead and hit plus or mi plus, or here I selected minus, I guess, for that. Medium cognitive is going to get a minus, and high cognitive is going to get a minus. And then the other two, which are going to be medium behavioral and high behavioral, are going to get pluses here. All right, maybe I should go show you that quick inside a jump. So from my drop-down menu here, I'm going to select LS Mean Contrast. Way down here towards the bottom. Let me bring that up just a little bit so we can see that a little better. So I just want medium behavioral and high behavioral to be together in one group. It doesn't actually matter if you give them the pluses or the minuses. They just need to be together. I'm also going to contrast that or compare that against the medium cognitive and the high cognitive. So I'm going to su su subtract one there and subtract one there. So again, we want the medium behavioral and high behavioral to be in one group and the medium cognitive and the high cognitive to be in the other group. And then just click Done here. And what's going to be returned is the p-value for me. So that p-value is what we have right here calling this test five, I guess. That is significant. So we are 95% certain that there is an effect due to the therapy program when I have my dosage level at medium or high. So for medium and high, there is a difference here. There's a statistically significant difference. And what program should I pick? I should pick the behavioral program. Again, I want to try to minimize the number of Odyssey behaviors, so I'm going to want to be picking the behavioral program. So the behavioral program is going to work better for these two groups. That's what we've learned here. All right, how about checking the assumptions? We have our residual plot. Again, this is just given by default there. So that's provided over here on the left-hand side somewhere. There it is. In this residual plot, we want to make sure that there's no unusual patterns, that the top, top and bottom are fairly consistent with one another and also that there's no outliers in the vertical direction. So this looks pretty good, this looks okay. On my normal quantile plot, I wanna select, I think it's row diagnostics here. So to get that, I gotta go row diagnostics and then plot residuals by normal quantiles. And that plot will be dumped out at the bottom to what I provided on the right-hand side here. And the normal assumption looks okay as well. So the assumptions look okay. We can go forth and have trust in our decisions that we've made. So real quickly, what have we learned from part A and part B? From part A, we learned that the overall t t test suggested that there was some effect, either due to dosage levels or therapy program. That's kind of where we started. The test for interaction suggested that we could not consider those effects individually and that we had to consider them in combination of one another. The multiple comparisons suggest that the low cognition, cognitive program has less out-of-seat behaviors than both the high cognitive and the high behavioral. Also, the low cognitive program had less out-of-seat behaviors than the medium cognitive. Other combinations were not significant. So let's go back real quickly and look at our this group right here is doing better than uh, better than this group, and it's doing better than this group. Okay, there's other comparisons as well that we talked about. That's kind of a high up view of what's going on there. The custom test suggested that for medium or high Ritalin dosage levels, you should be using the behavioral therapy program because it had statistically less out of seat behaviors. Okay, that does it then for handout number nine, pages 12 through 18 for STAT 310. Thank you.